Today on Ion LC, we bring you the latest segment of the Green Hornet, get you up to pitch with the baseball team, and fill you in on news around the world and the weather here at home. Ion LC starts right now. I'm Caroline Moore, here with Eye on LC. This week, Lisa Huber sat in on an environmental studies capstone class. Their forum featured the different changes students want to see the school make to help keep our environment alive and thriving. We now go to the latest installment of our feature, The Green Hornet. Lisa Huber here for Ion LC. We are at the Sustainability Forum. Let's see what they have to say. I am here with Stevie Long and Carly Plinus, who are in this class. Hello, guys. Hi. Hi. Stevie, can you tell us a little bit about this class? We are Environmental Studies 480, and what we've been doing is revising the Climate Commitment Plan that President Guerin signed on at 2007. And which group are you in? I'm in the Buildings and Grounds group. And what have you guys been working on? We have been working on researching different initiatives about the buildings and grounds of our campus here in Lynchburg and at Claytor Nature Center that we can um, investigate to change things to reduce our water usage, electricity usage, and carbon emissions overall. Okay. I'm here with Dr. Pavey, who is the teacher of this class. Hi. Um, what so made you decide to actually do a campus forum? Well, that was something that came out of class discussions. I've tried to make the class as um, I don't, hmm, democratic? I don't know if that's the right word, but um, with me being at the center of attention as little as possible. Um, so a lot of what we've decided uh, has been things that we've decided as a class. And so it came out pretty early on that we thought it would be a pretty good idea to try to raise awareness um, among the campus community that the class was even working on this and letting them know what's going on, but certainly also to get feedback um, especially from some of the key individuals that you know this plan might affect like people who work for the physical plan mm -hmm. and the business office and things like that so um, those were kind of the goals well this has been Lisa Huber for INLC back to you thanks Lisa those were some great ideas we now go to international news with Becca Loftus Becca hi this is Becca Loftus with your international news the death toll has risen to 34 after an explosion at a market in Pakistan's tribal region the explosion was a result of a suicide bomber who rode a motorcycle into the crowded market. Forty-two people were wounded in the blast as well. People were gathered in the market following the Friday prayer. A Kenyan chief foiled a robbery with the aid of social networking site Twitter. Chief Francis Kariki got a call about a thief in a neighbor's house and tweeted about the thieves asking for help. Residents subscribed to his tweets through a free text messaging system and they jumped into action in surrounding the house, sending the thugs out into the night. Many people don't have access to internet, a computer, or even smartphones, but text messaging is a vital form of communication. A manhunt is underway for two suspects who tied up a guard and stormed the Archaeological Museum of Olympia. Dozens of small statues were taken, as well as a gold ring. This is the second big theft in Greece this year, after other paintings were stolen from the National Gallery in Athens. Lastly, Iran's oil ministry announced that they have stopped crude exports to British and French companies. It came after Iran threatened to cut exports to European countries in retaliation for sanctions put in place by the European Union and the U.S. in January. The sanctions are meant to force Iran to provide information on their nuclear program. Iran is still selling oil to China, India, and other Asian countries. That's all for International. Back to you, Caroline. Thank you, Becca. Lynchburg College saw some amazing sports games this week. Kestrel Curl brings us more. Kestrel? Thanks, Caroline. The highlight game of the week was Wednesday night, and it had to have been one of the craziest basketball games that Turner Gym has ever hosted. Fifth-ranked Virginia Wesleyan came to town expecting an easy win, but boy were they in for a surprise. Lynchburg College hung right in there, even holding a lead for a good chunk of the game. Lynchburg was in top form and looked to be on track for a stunning upset. 
It was a tied game with 1.2 seconds left in regulation when Andrew Simmons nailed a half-court shot as time expired. The Red Swarm swarmed the court only to be forced back to the bleachers because prior to the shot, Elsie called a timeout. The bucket was ruled off, and to overtime we went. Stunned by what had just happened, Lynchburg College could not regroup and saw 11 Virginia Wesleyan points go unanswered in OT. It was a night of balanced scoring as Nate Campbell registered 15 points, Tucker Lucas 12, and Austin Chalemi 11. Plenty of other sporting events took place this past week, and here are your Hornet headlines. Lynchburg College baseball won two out of three games this week, an 11-8 win over Stevenson and a 7-4 run victory over Bringingham Southern. Then LC suffered a 17-10 loss to Frostburg State. Softball took one out of two games in a doubleheader against Greensboro, then swept the Averett doubleheader Saturday, taking the first game 7-2 and the second 4-3. Men's lacrosse opened the season with a convincing 21-4 victory over Bringingham Southern, but they fell to the top-ranked Salisbury 16-7. Now that basketball's regular season has came to an end, the focus is on ODAX. The men's top five performances bought them a first round bye. They will play Friday in Salem. The ladies finish with an eight seed and will take on top seeded Virginia Wesleyan. Thursday, 1 p.m. at the Salem Civic Center. Good luck to the Hornets. Back to you, Caroline. Thanks, Kestrel. Like all good things, the 60 degree weather couldn't last. Billy Orndorff brings us the latest on the inclement weather. Billy? Winter has finally decided to make an appearance here at LC. Yes, we are talking about the wonderful white fluffy stuff, snow. We are going to go ahead and look at the surface maps that showed this large storm that decided to dump the snow on us. As you can see, we were hit with the bulk of the precipitation while most others were spared with mostly rain. Now look forward to seeing the final snow amounts on our Facebook by 10 a.m. on Monday. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of our week. Our temperatures will be relatively average for the week with highs in the mid to upper 50s and lows in the mid to upper 20s and 30s. We will have mostly sunny skies for the bulk of the week with a chance of rain for both Wednesday and Thursday. Now remember Elsie, if you'd like a daily dose of eye on Elsie weather, then just go ahead and like us on Facebook. Back to you, Caroline. Thank you, Billy. Thanks for tuning in this week, and don't forget to catch up with Eye on LC on YouTube. Also, be sure to check us out on Facebook to get the latest and greatest news on campus throughout the week. Stay cool, LC.